Hey everybody, Pastor Jerry here with Pastor Robert Call. We're up in Berlin, Ohio, uh, Amish country. Been doing some shopping and eating today. And anyway, our wives are in the store on the hunt. So we're hanging out in the van. So we thought, hey, why not do a Facebook Live here for, you, uh, for a... I, yeah, I can talk right. For for for, <laughs> for 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 a few minutes. I know it's a Friday night going on 7. Don't know who all's out there, but you know, we'll see if anybody gets on here. But how you doing, brother? I'm good. Just rejoicing in the Lord. God is good every time that we just lift up his name and he shows himself to be strong and mighty on behalf of those whose hearts are turned toward him. I have a scripture I wanted to share as we're coming on live today. It's found in Isaiah chapter 57 and verse 15. It gives us a little bit of, of identity of the God that we serve. It says, For thus says the high and lofty one that inhabits eternity, whose name is, now like this next part, his name not like any other name. It says his name is holy. And when we enter into his presence, the holiness of God just invades our life and makes everything that was wrong in your life, it makes it right. God has a way of fixing things when we just enter into his presence and worship him. We know the Bible says in the presence of the Lord, there's the fullness of joy at his right hand. There's pleasures forevermore. But God gives us a clue here. It says, I dwell in the high and the holy place. I, I like that because the God we serve sets high and he looks low and the bible says that god condescends to men of low estate so no matter where you are in life and what you're dealing with today uh, we know we're still dealing with this coronavirus thing that's been going around and if you look on the things that are coming upon the face of the earth right now you might have an opportunity to be discouraged but we know that the lord wants to encourage us that like david we can separate ourselves from all of the adversity around you and just encourage yourself in the Lord. Let God cause you to rise up. Have victory over your enemies. So we know the name of the Lord is great. He says, I dwell in the high and the holy place. He dwells high. And the Bible says that we are seated together with Christ in heavenly places. Far above all principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world. You got to recognize where you're seated today. You are seated far above. So no matter what moves against you, you're looking from a perspective of being high and looking down below it. And I like what the Lord said. He gives us power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing by any means harms us. So it's always under our feet. And you got to remember that, that the God that we serve has bruised the devil and his kingdom under our feet. And the only permission that we give to the devil in our life is to look at the bottom of our shoes. Amen. Because we know that God's given us victory. Well, I want to read this to you. It says, I dwell in the high and the holy place with him. And the very next word I circled, it says, I dwell in the high and the holy place. The high and the holy place with him also, which is where we fit in. The also. We are the also's of God. Not enough to know that he's high and he's lifted up. But he also dwells with the lowly. He dwells with those who would be willing to humble themselves in the sight of the Lord. Also, it's kind of like saying, I'm a whosoever. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever will, let him come and let him drink from the fountains of life as the Spirit of God bids us to come. But it dwells also that is, that is with him that is of a contrite heart and a contrite spirit to revive us. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for revival. Amen. We want to be lifted up in His presence. We want to be revived, have life brought back to us, have healing brought back to us, strength brought back to us, everything that God has promised us in Christ. And the Bible says all of the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. And we know God is faithful. We serve a God that cannot fail, a God who wants to inhabit the praises of his people says so we humble ourselves under the sight of the Lord. We begin to exalt his name together. He also dwells with us who are in humility before God. The Bible says God resists the proud, but he gives grace unto the humble. So I want to encourage you tonight. Humble yourself in the mighty hand of the Lord. Let God lift you up and cause all of your enemies to be scattered. Amen. Now, does all this pandemic and the corona and had a bunch of rioting and all this mess going on in the world. Does any of this change who God is? God's Not character? Mm. God's response to us? No. And that's the thing. If we have faith in God, we know that God doesn't tempt any man with evil. 
God cannot be tempted with evil. So we got to put it in this right perspective that in order for God to bring any type of sickness or disease against us, he'd have to borrow it from someplace else. Because we know that he is Jehovah Rapha. In his presence, there is no sickness. There is no disease that can abide in his presence. So any weapon that tries to fashion itself against your life, all you need to do is call upon the name of the Lord, have faith in God, take his word and put God in remembrance of his promises, and the Lord will drive out that pandemic and the sickness out of the midst of you. What I like about God is he knows how to keep us. And he knows how to keep us from getting afflicted. We don't have to be afraid. God's not giving us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and of a sound mind. So all you have to do is trust in him, and God will keep you in this time of the pandemic. Amen. One of my favorite scriptures is Psalm 46, 1. It says, God is, mm -hmm. not God was, God used to be, God might be, God is Amen. our refuge and strength, a very present, yes. very present. Doesn't it means he's not way off yonder somewhere. Nope. Sometimes we think, and yeah, God's in the high places like you shared, but we're seated with him in heavenly places. But God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Yes, he is. He's right there with us. Nahum 1 7 says, The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, yeah. and he knows those who trust in him. Yes, he is. I want to encourage you during the time, the season that we're in, that God is a very present help. He is right there with us, and he's in us. You know, again, the Old Testament, Holy Spirit would just come upon certain individuals at certain times for certain purposes. We now have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us. We have the anointing of God, the glory of God, the fire of God, the resurrection power of God dwelling on the inside of us. And regardless of what's going on in this world, regardless of what comes against us, again, I love the scripture, no weapon formed against you will prosper doesn't say they won't form. It says they won't prosper. And no tongue that rises against you in judgment shall stand. We got victory, church. My Bible tells me the Lord always leads us in triumph. The key there is are we continuing to follow him? He has victory in store for us. So we just need to continue to walk hand in hand with him. Stay spirit-filled, spirit-led, spirit-empowered. God will move mightily in each and every one of our lives regardless of of any sickness, disease, pandemic, or whatever comes against us. He's for us. And if God is for us, hallelujah, who Amen. can be against us? That's right. You know, the Bible says, while well, we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, because the things which are seen are temporal and subject to change. Amen. One day the Lord gave me this revelation about the fig tree that he cursed. And the next day they come back by where the fig tree was, and Peter looks at the fig tree he said, Master, the fig tree that you cursed is withered up and died. The Lord gave me this thought with this. Peter was moved by what he saw, but Jesus was moved by what he said. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that the communication of our faith becomes effectual by the acknowledging or understanding all those good things that God has given to us in Christ Jesus. So when you understand the provision of God, you know, Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, and don't forget any of his benefits. He heals us from all of our diseases. He crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercy. When you understand the provision of God, then you have faith to grab a hold of the promises of the Lord, and you're not moved by what you see around us. Amen. Somebody else's experience of receiving or not receiving has nothing to do with the Word of God in your life. That's right. Too many times we want to base our faith on what so-and-so received or what they did not receive. But we don't have to look to them because they're not the ones that bring the healing. We look to Him, Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, knowing that if we call upon Him, we're going to receive the provision of the Lord. The Bible says that we ask anything according to God's will, He hears us. And if we know that He heard us, we know that we received the petitions that we desired of Him. God is faithful. Amen. And God will never come short of his promises in our life when we have our faith in him, knowing that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God never changes. Hallelujah. So we don't want to look around at what's happening to everybody else. We want to look to him that is faithful, the God who can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to his power that's at work within us. That scripture that Pastor Jerry had just shared about the Lord being an ever-present help in the time of trouble, it gives us an exaggerated example. Though the earth be removed. Yeah. Well, if the earth is removed, you don't have anything to stand on. <laughs> and, and yet, in spite of that, the psalmist said, I'm going to put my faith in God. 
though the mountains swell up and they cast themselves into the midst of the sea, there's a great turmoil that's going on in the earth realm. We don't look to that. We still look to God knowing that God is faithful. And that if in an exaggerated moment like that, you can come to the end of that and still have faith in God. What more can you do when you just have these little things that try to rise up against you? The, the afflictions or the sickness or the, the where the enemy tries to put his hand against you. That has no bearing at all. All we need to do is look to God and God will deliver us. Amen. Bible says we're to have faith in God. Mark eleven twenty two also means have the faith Ooh. of God. He's Thank given to each man the measure of faith. We've all been given the same measure of faith. Or Roberts wasn't given a greater measure of faith. Or Kenneth Hagin or Benny Hinn or none of them. We've all been given the same measure of faith. It's what we do with it. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. It's times like this with all that's going on in this world. We see what we're made of. But we need to continue to submit, surrender to God, trust in God. God watches over his word to perform it. This is a season, especially this year. Man, my family and I know others have went through all kinds of stuff. But it's the word that we've put in us over the 30-some years that we've been living for God that has come out. Knowing God watches over his word to perform it. Knowing that every good and perfect gift comes from him. Knowing that we're his workmanship created for good works and the work the good work that he began in us, he'll bring to completion. Yeah. And as Robert said, he's the author and the finisher of our faith. We just need to keep our eyes on him, not focus on all the drama and all the stuff that's going on. I love, I believe it's in Romans 4, where it's talking about Abraham and how he had the promise of God. It says, he considered not his own body, being about 100 years old, in the deadness of Saren's womb. He was encouraged in his faith, knowing that God was able to do what God said he was going to do. Kind of massacred part of that up. But he was convinced, oh, he's fully convinced that what God had promised, he was also able to perform. You need to get fully convinced that what God's promised in his word, he's able to perform. Many of you have had prophetic words spoken over your lives and ministries. You need to get fully convinced that what God's promised you, he's able to perform and will perform it. Now, we all know how the enemy operates. He's got no new tricks. He's a liar. He's a deceiver. All he does is come to you, basically, did God really say? And when a prophetic word spoken over you or a, a promise in God's word that you're grabbing a hold of, he's going to try to get you to doubt that, that, well, that isn't really meant for you. Well, that might be meant for him, but I don't know that that's meant for you. No, it is meant for me. You need Amen. to get hold of the promises of God, stand on God's word. And I even, and it's in Acts where Paul was warned by the Holy Spirit that nothing but chains and prison awaited him. And he said, none of these things move me. Mm. That's the place that I'm getting at. That's the place that I'm challenging the firehouse church to get at. That regardless of what you go through, none of those things are going to move you. What do you mean not move me? Move you out of a place of faith. Move you out of trusting God and taking God at his word. Because when we take God at his word, fully, and that's what trust means, fully rely on on him regardless of what comes against us regardless of what we go through we will walk into victory and experience everything that god has for us everything that god is he is he is savior healer deliverer provider our joy giver our rock refuge fortress strength prince of peace all those things you can't separate any part of that from who god is so whatever your need is tonight whatever your need may be next week Continue to look to the Lord Jesus Christ and trust in him to move mightily in your life and walk in the authority, the dominion, and the power that he's given you. Amen. Good word. I think about it with Abraham, what he had just shared. It says he staggered not at the yeah, promise of God. God through unbelief, but became strong in faith, giving glory to God. So the greatest opportunity that we have to allow Jesus to be magnified in our lives is that when trouble comes against us we're not going to be moved by that trouble but we're going to stand steadfast the scripture said we're unmovable always abounding in the work of the lord for as much as we know that our labor is not in vain in god we have to get to the place where we absolutely have settled it in our hearts amen god's not a man that he should lie he's not the son of man that he should repent he has made a promise that he himself is not able to perform there's nobody like our god there's no equal with god there's no rival with god jesus said i from the beginning i saw satan fall like lightning out of heaven God defeated them from the very moment he Amen. tried to rebel against God and tried to become like the Most High, uh, trying to overthrow the kingdom. God didn't even move off from his throne. He said, no, you won't, and cast that 
devil down. Amen. And then Jesus comes on the scene demonstrating the kingdom of God was with power. It wasn't with just word, but it was in demonstration and power. The kingdom of God was nigh unto humanity. God brought healing. The Bible says Jesus went about doing good, healing everybody right. that was oppressed of the devil because God was with him. So when he came on the scene, he came full of power. And the Bible says he didn't speak as one of the scribes or as one of the Pharisees, a religious sect, but he spoke as one that had authority and power. And they were amazed at the demonstration of the kingdom that came among them. Signs and wonders and healings broke out. The blind saw, the lame walked, the, the deaf heard, the devils were cast out of those that needed to be delivered. And the kingdom of God was magnified in their sight. Jesus said, the kingdom has come nigh unto you. He said, I by the finger of God cast out devils. And if I cast out devils by the finger of God, no doubt the kingdom has come among you. Jesus told us, he said, the kingdom is not come of observation, but it's within you. Amen. And so where you're going to get your victory at is not outwardly, not waiting for somebody to give you some word from heaven. The kingdom of God and the victory of God in your life is abiding in you all the while. The Bible says we have this treasure in earthen vessels so that the excellency of the power would not be of ourselves, but it would be of God. And like Pastor Jerry said, is God working in you both to will and to do of his own good, good pleasure? pleasure. He's going to do that work until the day when Jesus comes again. The Bible says that when he comes, we'll be like him because we're going to have the revelation of who he is. We're going to see him as he is. And so more and more as you study the word, get into the word. Allow the Word of God to get in you, to get the revelation of Jesus. The more you get the Word in you, the more you're going to understand who Christ is and who you are in Christ. The Bible says, Christ in us, the hope of Amen. glory. But the more revelation you get about God's Word, the more bold you're going to be Amen. against the devil. Because the Word of God emboldens us. It makes us strong. It makes us where we don't compromise the truth. But we stand and we resist that devil. And that devil has no choice but to flee from your life. So all you need to do is have confidence in God. Like he said, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord that God is faithful. That he's going to meet every need in your life according to his own riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So you don't have any problems that's too big for our God. Amen. You cannot bankrupt heaven. Heaven is inexhaustible. Now think about the woman that had the issue of blood. Jesus was going down to Jairus' house to raise his daughter up from the dead. On the way there, that woman reaches out, touches the hem of his garment. Immediately she made whole. Jesus looked at Jairus. He, he told him, don't be afraid, but just trust and believe. And so as Jairus continued to go into the house with Jesus, there was enough power not only to make the woman well, but also to c c complete the work that was begun where he raised Jairus' daughter from the dead. So when that virtue went out of him, he said, who touched me because I felt virtue go out of me. When that virtue went out of Jesus to heal the woman with the issue of blood, it didn't bankrupt Jesus. That's right. He's still full of power. Amen. He still had the ability not only to meet her need, but to raise up Jairus' daughter from the dead. And we know that the same God that we serve is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It never changes. He's still full of power. And all you have to do is trust in Him. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, I believe the word. I receive the report of my God. The arm of the Lord is going to be made known unto my life. And I'm going to receive what I'm in need of because God is not a respecter of persons. What he's done for one, he'll do for you. Amen. And there's so many people in this season that's been healed and delivered, even from that COVID-19. God is a God of miracles. And all you have to do is put your trust in him. Uh, I encourage you, if you don't go to a place where where you see the demonstration of God in operation, then you need to come into a house where the glory of the Lord is Amen. manifested and where God is doing great signs and wonders among the people. So uh, sometimes you just have to make yourself available for the atmosphere. And when you are willing to come into a place that you might be nervous about, you might be concerned, uh, not being accustomed to that type of flow, but if you get hungry enough for God, you won't care what people think about That's you. Right. You're going to enter into his presence and you're going to receive the breakthrough that God has in store for you. Amen. Sometimes you got to press through to receive what God has for you. That woman with the issue of blood because of the law, she wasn't even supposed to be outside of the house, wasn't even supposed to be in public. And she pressed through a crowd. There's a throng of people, a crowd of people and said, and that's part of faith too. 
I believed, therefore I spoke. She said, if I just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. But she shouldn't have been out in public. So she had to press through, press through the law, press through the crowd to touch Jesus' garment. Garment. Awesome thing is, we don't have to touch Jesus' garment. Amen. Holy Spirit lives in us. Amen. It's by faith and sometimes patience. Because it's by faith and patience that we inherit the promise. And we're to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. But faith is believing now, but sometimes, and I've experienced it, there's a waiting period before the healing or the breakthrough manifests, but we believe now. But we just wanted to encourage you tonight, regardless of what you may be going through, regardless of what's going on in this world, it's not a time to have your faith shaken. It's not Jesus said when he returns, will he find faith in the earth? He said in the last days, men's heart will fail them because of fear. That's why I know this pastor and this pastor, we're preaching faith. And we're not just preaching it, we're living it, we're walking it out and demonstrating amongst our people because we don't want any of our people taken by surprise or their hearts failing them for fear regardless of what's going on in this world. We serve an awesome God, a mighty God. Greater truly is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And again, if he's for us, who can be hallelujah. against us? Thank you, Lord. This wasn't bad for just a spontaneous nah. getting on here thing. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Uh, if you're looking for a church, I'm down in the Carroll, Lancaster area, Sunday mornings at 1030 at the Firehouse Church. We meet. Uh, give them your information. I know you got a guest speaker coming in this weekend. We do. We have a prophet, uh, Tom Stamen, coming from Wisconsin from the IMI Ministries, which is an international ministry. But he's coming with a prophetic word and the revelation of God to impart to the people who come out to that meeting. So we are located, this is Church Triumphant, 113 Madison Avenue in Newark, Ohio, 43055. Our service times are Sunday morning at 1030 this week, and our normal service times are Sunday nights at 5. So we're having two services this week, Sunday morning, 1030, and Sunday night at 5 p.m., but we know God's going to show up and do Amen. great exploits, as He always does. Amen. The theme of our church is your appointment with power. power. And God never disappoints us. Every time we come together, God shows Himself to be mighty and alive by many infallible proofs. One of the things about church, which I realized early on, is not every church is the same. Mm, that's right. They all have His name on the outside, but they don't all have His glory on the inside. Come on. And I would rather be in a house where we don't have to wonder whether or not Jesus showed up. Amen. We know he showed up just like that woman with the issue of blood. The Bible says she had the testimony in herself. Nobody had to tell her she was made whole. She knew immediately when she touched Jesus that virtue had entered into her body and the plague was stayed. She received a miracle from the hand of God. So you don't have to uh, be at a place where you wonder whether or not he showed up. He shows up and you'll know that he's in the house because of his glory and his presence and the miracles that he leaves behind. At, at the end of his time with the, his disciples, he rose from the dead and he told them to go out and to preach the world, the word into every to every creature. And the Bible says they went everywhere preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Jesus went with them, following them with signs and wonders that accompanied his word. So if you're preaching the kingdom, you ought to see kingdom results. You ought to see signs and wonders and healings right. and miracles. Those are the normal for God. They're not abstract. He is a God of miracles. And He is a God that is able to meet every one of your needs. So we just encourage you, if you're not going to a place that, that you're seeing the power of God manifested, then find you a place where Amen. Jesus is evidently working mightily among the people. And you'll be glad you did. Amen. So this Sunday at 1030 in the Newark area, uh, there'll be meeting uh, same time 10 30 in the Lancaster Carroll area we're going to be meeting and then Sunday night at 5 we're going to be going to his place to enjoy the service the encounter that's going on there Amen. anyway y'all have a blessed evening hopefully something that we said encouraged you in the Lord praise God